I've had people look, put me down because I didn't look like them. I look stronger. I've had people look past me because of the color of my skin. I've had people overlook me because I was a woman. I had critics say I will never win another Grand Slam when I was only at number seven, and now here I stand today with 21 Grand Slam titles, and I'm still going. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me with the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Just like moon and suns with the certainty of tides, just like hopes and springing high, still I rise. We continue to be told we should be grateful just to have the opportunity to play professional soccer and to get paid for doing it. And in this day and age, you know, it's about equality, it's about equal rights, it's about equal pay, and we're pushing for that. And we believe now is the time is right. Prior to the passage of Title IX, women were not taken seriously in the world of sports. Their sports were viewed as recreational activities. They were expected to be considered lucky to be playing. They were expected to remain ladylike and feminine in the heat of competition. They were expected to remain silent regarding their pay. They were expected to remain in the identity that men wanted to see them. Female athletes lacked economic and social support that would guarantee prosperity, and therefore they were placed at a disadvantage, making the dream of becoming a professional athlete for young girls extremely difficult. Title IX asserted that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Although women have been granted legal access through the passage of Title IX in sports, they continue to have stark economic differences as well as vast disparities in how they are portrayed in the media, which leads to limited opportunities for growth. Unless people make like a full commitment to equality mm -hmm. and they really feel totally invested in it, then they're always going to find ways to, to, to maybe adhere to the letter of the law but not the spirit of the law. Right, yeah. These inequalities perpetuate a belief in American society that women are inferior. However, every minute of every day, female athletes are crossing the finish line. They are breaking boundaries. They are chasing their dreams. They are proving that they are equal. This is a huge lead for America. Let's look out for the time. This is special. This is a world record by a huge margin, 40.82. 27 years after the GDR had run 41.37. Triumph, victory, success, notoriety. Shouldn't these be enough to elicit equality? Female athletes can dominate the world of sports. Their countless championship banners and the trophies captured prove their success. Although female athletes compete at the same high level as male athletes, they still earn less than men. In golf, women make 36 cents to every man's dollar. In tennis, women earn 59 cents to every man's dollar. The economic gap between male and female athletes is not restricted to a single sport. The gender pay gap is seen throughout the world of sports, no matter the talent, no matter the track record. Every professional athlete faced a grueling journey to get to the summit of their sport. However, for women, once they reach the top, the work does not subside. Professional women's soccer player in the National Women's Soccer League, Tiffany Weimer, plays for the Washington Spirit. Although she has pursued her career with relentless passion and determination, her efforts are not being repaid. Weimer asserts that most female players must supplement their income while playing professional soccer proving that their hard-earned paycheck is not enough to survive or thrive. 
female soccer players are forced to find creative ways to make money outside of the six-month season, while male soccer players get paid during the off-season. This is not an ideal lifestyle for a young athlete wanting to play professionally at Weimar States. It is a lifestyle reserved only for female athletes. The struggle for a female athlete to get to the peak performance at the professional level is daunting. Once they reach the top, and once glory becomes a habit, does economic equality increase? Even the unmatched and premier female athletes earn less than their male counterparts at the highest level. Roger Federer and Serena Williams, arguably the two best male and female tennis players in the world, have proven their greatness on a consistent basis. In the 2015 US Open, Roger Federer was crowned the male singles champion, while Serena Williams earned the title of female singles champion. The two players played the same amount of singles matches in the same tournament under the same conditions and won identical titles. The difference between the two was the amount of money they earned as a result of their victory. Federer was granted $731,000 in prize money, while Williams only earned $495,000. Same title, same caliber athlete. However, the female earned less. It seems that no matter how successful of an athlete a woman can become, she will continue to earn less than a man doing the same job. The clear economic disadvantage that female athletes are placed at spreads across all sports. This pay gap is especially obvious in one of the biggest sports in America, basketball. The collective bargaining agreements, or the player contracts, of the WNBA and the NBA demonstrate this inequality through the disparities in the salary caps of the two leagues. A salary cap is an agreement or rule that places a limit on the amount of money that a team can spend on player salaries and benefits. In the NBA, the salary cap for each team is a massive $63 million, and the economic allowance for each player is $8 million. Contrastingly, as stated in the WNBA collective bargaining agreement, the salary cap for each individual team is $901,000, and the money allotted for each player ranges from $38,000 to $109,000. The WNBA players are placed at such a clear disadvantage economically, crippling any opportunity for growth of the individuals or of the league in general. The WNBA gets a fraction of the coverage that the NBA receives, selling far less tickets and bringing in far less revenue. Does this make the athletes getting paid less than the men inferior competitors? Absolutely not. With the limited economic resources that the athletes of the WNBA are provided with, the growth of the league and the recognition of the sport is hindered, and these exciting and heart-pounding moments will remain forgotten. Some might argue that female athletes sign these contracts and are fully aware that they are granted significantly less economic resources than their male counterparts. They might argue women should be grateful and realize how lucky they are to even be partaking in athletic endeavors. Tiffany Weimer has never been told these exact words in her career. However, she feels there is an underlying feeling among players and coaches that they should be happy with what they get. Female athletes, however, are nowhere near feeling complacent. Weimer claims that, yes, we are fortunate to have these opportunities, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't fight for more. This fight is strong. The fight is building, and it will endure. The most recent and prominent case of female athletes advocating for themselves and for their right to equal wages as male athletes has come from the United States women's national soccer team. The United States women's soccer team has been dominant and has embodied greatness in the national soccer community. In the summer of 2015, the women's soccer team secured a historic third World Cup victory and a commanding win over Japan. The event made waves in the world of sports, becoming the most watched soccer game in America by both men and women reaching just under 23 million viewers. The women had proved their athletic ability and had cemented their place in history. And female sports had been put in a rare and powerful spotlight. Overall, you're feeling it. Like, there is a change in our culture where women in sports go together. However, this newly attained exposure and proven dominance did not amount to economic equality. The women's soccer team earned a mere $2 million for becoming world champions compared to the $35 million 
the German men's team earned for winning the World Cup in 2014. The women's team earned a quarter of what the U.S. men earned just for making it to the round of 16 in the 2014 tournament. The U.S. women's soccer team has been so much more successful than the U.S. men's soccer team, and yet they still make a fraction of what the male players do. Two million dollars for female champions, eight million dollars given to the men. This shocking pay gap amongst male and female soccer players did not sit right for the women of the U.S. team. Star forward Abby Wambach claims that when you do win, then you have the opportunity and the platform to start voicing your opinion and say, hey, you know what? This is a little bit too big of a pay gap. This team of proven superior female athletes felt they had a voice powerful enough to make real change, and they took the action they felt was necessary. Five members of the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team sued the United States Soccer Federation for wage discrimination, and as a result, made waves in the world of sports. Weimer claims the U.S. Women's National Team is an example for women in all fields of work, including other sports, and this sentiment has echoed on a national scale. Laura Gentile, Senior Vice President of ESPN Women, believes what the U.S. Women's National Team is doing regarding equal pay will make significant change due to the fact that women now have the courage and the leverage to say this isn't right and we demand more. The legal actions taken by the U.S. Women's National Team have brought attention to a conversation that has been circulating for decades, the unjust pay disparity between the genders in athletics. Although female athletes have proven through their countless triumphs and historic victories that they are as athletically capable as male athletes, they continue to be paid significantly less. Female athletes must advocate for themselves and for the future generation of female athletes to bring about economic equality. In retrospect, we have come a long way, says Weimer, but we still have a long way to go. Female athletes are portrayed as unfeminine and aggressive. These portrayals limit their coverage, their credibility as athletes, and their economic opportunities. Maintaining the femininity of female athletes is crucial to sport media companies, who market to a majority male audience. This results in stereotypes governing conversations about female athletes. In the past, there's really been a one-dimensional way to cover female athletes, and you kind of had to be hot or good-looking. Newscasters often discuss female athletes' dating habits, marriages, and pregnancies, rather than their athletic achievements. Talks of this kind trivialize female contributions to the sports industry. Commentators repeatedly talk about the nurturing side of athletes, which ultimately depict female athletes in the role of the traditional mother or wife. The coverage of female athletes often omits discussion of their skills and talents. An example of this deterrence from recognizing athletic abilities is through a Sports Illustrated article, which focused on college basketball player Fantasia Goodwin's pregnancy. This story focused on how Goodwin hid her pregnancy and played competitive basketball until two months before her baby was born, rather than focus on her athletic skill, as she was the second best rebounder on her team, as well as the third best on the team with 35 steals. It's absurd to think about when it comes to male athletes, but it happens all the time when it comes to female athletes. Mm -hmm. Even though women are described as feminine, their statistics in their sports show everything but that. They are aggressive, competitive, and unrelenting. Maria Sharapova ranked number nine in the world by the Women's Tennis Association. Anna Kornikova ranked as the number one tennis player in doubles in 2000. Brandi Chastain, member of the 1999 victors of the Women's World Cup. All of this achieved success by these athletes who get overlooked by the media, who values their images over their achievements. When they do get media coverage, however, instead of glorifying their skill, these athletes are commonly sexualized and objectified. Commentators and media companies are guilty of sexualizing female athletes through visual and verbal commentary. This is done for the purpose to yet again appeal to the majority male audience. We're still somewhat overlooked in the sports world. You know, when you, you look at traditional sports media, other than the Olympics, everything is really covered with a young male and a young man in mind as the target audience. And it didn't seem like the sensibility that women have or the types of stories that women care about were really being covered like they could. Appealing to a male audience and sexualizing 
women in sports, ultimately does not provide an optimistic outlook for women competing in sports, as well as reinforces the perception that women's sports are not legitimate. Tennis player Maria Sharapova was victim to this marginalization. She received more media attention regarding her attractiveness rather than her skills on the court. While Sharapova was once ranked number one female player in the world, research shows that commentators almost always commented on her appearance rather than athletic achievements, like being the only Russian tennis player to hold the career grand slam. This lack of acknowledgement regarding athletic capability ultimately diminished Sharapova's career achievements, making her seem as if looks were the only thing she had to offer. Similar to Sharapova, Anna Kornikova accumulated a good deal of media coverage. However, much of it was not due to her talent as a tennis player, but rather for her appearance. Being deemed sexually attractive by the media resulted in Kornikova's over-sexualization to appeal to the male viewer. Comments made by commentators during a match included statements referencing Kornikova's boyfriend, as well as the amount of time devoted to seeing her play and flying across the country, in which provoked the agreement from both commentators that it was well worth it. Talks of this nature are what female athletes ultimately have to deal with to be seen as an equal in the world of sports. About the way that female athletes are stereotypically depicted, that they are still um, kind of forced to conform to images that seem much more about glamour and beauty and sexuality than about their prowess as an athlete. Which is For soccer player Brandi Chastain, comments of a sexualizing nature were not alien. In the 1999 Women's World Cup and the last round of penalty kicks, after a grueling 120 minutes of non-stop competition, Chastain stepped up and without flinching, put the ball in the back of the net, crowning her and her teammates world champions. In her moment of glory, Chastain ripped off her shirt, exposing her sports bra to the world. Her celebration caused more of a media frenzy, having commentators talk about her sports bra rather than her historic moment. Happenings such as this show the apparent inequality that female athletes endure compared to male athletes. A male athlete removing his shirt is not considered newsworthy, but a female doing it is. Consequently, Chastain received much criticism from media outlets. Comments from the media included one from David Letterman, who was talking about David Cohn, one of the Yankees who pitched a perfect game. To this he said, after each strike, you rip off your jersey and run around in a black sports bra. This type of criticism is what Chastain had to endure as a result of celebrating her victory. Chastain was one of the many skilled female athletes whose personal appearance and actions were judged according to what would appeal to a male-based audience. Over-sexualization occurs on a consistent basis to athletes whose abilities should surpass their physical appearance. If, if you don't play that game, then you get ostracized. And if you do play the game, you get trivialized. So it's a no-win situation. It is a fragile balance for a female hoping to achieve athletic greatness. It is shameful to be known for her body rather than her track record. It is a struggle female athletes face every day. Female athletes believe they can be who they want to be. Strong, confident, and independent. They want to compete and want to be something different than what media companies portray them as. Mm -hmm. We're just on the cusp of that and you're feeling it, right? Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. As they grow up, their perceptions of who they are and who they can become change to conform to media's portrayal of female athletes due to the exposure of the media and the stereotypes of society. A confident and more empowered population of female athletes needs to be cultivated, fostered, and encouraged in the United States. The media has the power to present a positive image for young women to strive to become top athletes. Although there are fleeting moments of appropriate depictions, there must be a more widespread and united effort by media and broadcasting outlets to depict female athletes as competitive, influential, and powerful women. Laura Gentile and her website ESPN Women has been a catalyst for this type of change. I think taking an approach like we're taking, which is really covering the full woman and showing women in the midst of competing and it's okay to be sweaty and it's okay to be focused right. and just trying to do a new
new light on that. Writing and submitting letters to editors and other executives in sports broadcasting companies will provide a necessary push to portray women as equals. If companies refuse to change their practices, their consumers should boycott their magazine or network. This will allow change to move in the right direction, leading to more effective progress in creating equality for female athletes and women's sports. One major argument made by the companies that portray women in this misogynistic fashion is to target the majority male audience in order to continue a steady flow of economic income. Media outlets believe that men continuously desire to see women in traditional gender roles, weak, inferior, submissive. However, critical letters condemning the current representation of women in the media would let the executives know that their target audience is changing their views. It creates a win-win situation for both the executives and the consumers. Female athletes are given a confident voice through the media, which gains more viewers by attracting a female audience through a more progressive portrayal. Adults serve as role models for the youth, whether good or bad. For athletes, one of the main influential adults in their lives are their coaches. Coaches have the ability to change the way a girl might play a sport and how they view themselves as a competitor and as a person. Tiffany Weimer claims coaches have the capability to empower their athletes to become strong, confident, high-achieving people in general. The presence of women as coaches in sports will allow young athletes to know that there are females in leadership positions. Female coaches would be able to expose the true nature and characteristics of a female athlete as strong, confident, and competitive. Young female athletes would be shown that they can compete with the boys, they can thrive, and they can win. Coaches would be able to teach them to embrace the sport they play and the athlete they can become. Female role models would help to break down traditional stereotypes and provide a more accurate representation of women in minds, on TV, and on the next magazine cover. Female athletes compete on the fields, on the courts, in the rinks, and in the pools. They compete for aces, for goals, for records, and for holes in one. Female athletes need fair contracts. They need to follow in the footsteps of the U.S. women's soccer team. They need to show how persistent, how powerful, and how confident female athletes are. Companies need to represent the true image of female athletes. This would create a domino effect, spurring growth in the amount of fights for fair and equal contracts for female athletes. Similar to the united efforts by men and women before the passage of Title IX, the fight for complete social and economic equality must be collected and must be unified. The U.S. soccer team was one of the first to take on the fight for equal contracts and now serves as an example for other female athletes. Now it is time for more female athletes to follow in their example in order to bring about economic equality in the world of sports. On a local level, one can show support for female athletes by attending both boys and girls sporting events. Increased attendance for female athletics is vital to the growth and development of the sports, the athletes, and the appreciation for female athletics in general. By supporting women's sports, the media will depict female athletes as an influential part of today's society, and the athletes will gain more leverage to fight for economic equality. Prior to the passage of Title IX, there was little to no opportunity for young girls aspiring to pursue a career in athletics. They had no support from the government, no female role models in the industry to look up to, and no hope to chase their dreams. They took the fearless actions of women in a male-dominated industry to stand up for what was right, to stand up for equality. Today, on every field, court, and rink in America, young girls are pushing themselves further than ever before and taking advantage of the efforts of the women before them. Female athletics has made immense strides towards equality. However, there is a long way to go, and there are no limits on what female athletes can achieve. The next generation of women like Abby Wambach, like Serena Williams, and like Hope Solo are ready to take the reins towards equality and are prepared to encourage young girls like them to never stop working towards their goals, no matter what obstacles lay in their paths. Young girls and young women grow up now with the feeling that sports is for them. It's, yeah. You know, it's our thing. You know, it's not my brother's thing, it's not my father's thing, it's mine.